Hello, welcome to the first two parts. So we're going to do gas exchange in animals. And in this one, I'm just going to go through gas exchange in mammals. And I'll keep fish and insects for later. However, it's on the same sheet, just to save a bit of time. Right, let's get into it. Um, anything about gas exchange, anything where you are asked to write about it, always relate it to Fick's law, where, as, you, as we know, the rate of diffusion is proportional to surface area multiplied by the concentration difference divided by the thickness of membrane. So I need a big surface area, I need a large concentration difference, and I need a very thin membrane, big times big, divided by small equals a high number for rate of diffusion. So let's do terminology. Vital capacity, first of all. This is, it isn't the volume of the lungs. Um, it is the maximum amount of air that can be expelled. So this is the max volume. I, should, I said amount, never say amount. Volume of, unless there's no other word, of air that can be expelled. So biggest breath in, in one breath. Yeah, so biggest breath in and biggest breath out. Breath out. Um, if you ever had a um, an asthma check, then they um, they get to breathe out and out and out and out. You have to push your diaphragm as, as high as possible, and it's proper painful to give your vital capacity. It's a hard actual measurement. It hurts. None of us have. You know, most people have never measured their vital capacity. And the reason why it's not the volume of the lungs is because of the residual volume. And this is a is a is a crucial stat. Is this? This is the it's the yeah, it's the air that can't be exhaled. Yeah. That can't be exhaled. E.g. Yeah, it's the it's the air in bronchioles um, and trachea and bronchi. But next is tidal volume. And just like the tides can be you can have high tides, low tides, small tides, etc. The tidal volume is the air exchanged per breath. So air exchanged volume of sorry. Volume of air exchanged per breath. So as I'm sat here now, my tidal volume is really low. When I start running around, my tidal volume will increase and it will approach my vital capacity. And we measure all this is by doing the pulmonary ventilation rate. It's very similar to cardiac output is this. So um, your PVR, your pulmonary ventilation, ventilation rate equals your TV, your tidal volume, multiplied by your BR, that's your breathing rate. And tidal volume, that's measured in decimeters cubed. Remember that's a thousand centimeters cubed. And breathing rate, this is in breaths per minute. Again, cardiac output, obviously for the heart, would be stroke volume, not tidal volume. The volume of a ventricle multiplied by heart rate, number of heart, number of contractions per minute. So I just thought we'd go through how we would relate this to a condition called emphysema. And this is where a lot of people um, are doing lots of revising and, and think, oh, we haven't done, you know, do we need to know fibrosis? Do we need to know emphysema? None of the lung conditions are on the syllabus that we're doing now. They used to be, hence they'll appear in all past paper questions. However, they can tell you about a lung condition like this and ask you to um, suggest explanations why the person is getting very little um, oxygen diffusion over their alveoli. So it says emphysema causes loss of elasticity, sorry, elastic recoil of the alveoli and alveolar walls. The remaining alveolar walls thicken. Okay, so let's take a surface area approach first. So surface area, uh, this is going to go down because there is it causes a loss of elastic recoil of alveoli and alveolar walls. So I've got less alveolar wall, so less alveoli. Alveolar wall. Therefore, fewer places for diffusion. Fewer places. For diffusion, that uh, that's kind of obvious. Um, so that's surface area. They, they have a decrease in surface area. Um, let's do thickness next, because that's obvious as well. So 
there's an increase. Um, yeah, as walls thicken, be careful there of saying cell walls. Um, cells is all thickened, therefore there's a longer diffusion distance. Again, I'm paraphrasing this, but you can hear me anyway. You can go back if you need to. I'm, I'm writing diffusion, diffusion there, to diffusion distance. The next one is the one that so we've so we've sorted out surface areas done. I think it's the membranes done. It's concentration difference is the last one. So conch. So as we can see here, the there's a loss of elasticity, elastic recall of the alveoli. That means that. In, in someone who's breathing normally, when they breathe in, the alveoli will stretch. And then when we exhale, the, um, the alveoli kind of like snaps shut. It's like a like the balloon fully empties because it's an elastic, there's like layers of elastic tissue around the alveoli. So if we don't do the elastic recoil, then it's going to be like a saggy balloon that's left, like a balloon that's been blown up like 15 times and it's gone a bit saggy. So... Um, that just means that in terms of these words over here, vital capacity, residual volume and tidal volume, the residual volume is going to be bigger because not only is the air in the bronchioles and trachea, it's also in the alveoli. So, yeah, this is where we can say that there's, um, yeah, the, yeah, air in the alveoli can't be exhaled. Air in alveoli. Can't be exhaled as much. Therefore, we have a large residual volume. This is the one. This is the, the one that's very A level. The other two are very GCSE, aren't they? This is this is yeah, really kind of A level detail because it says residual volume, um, and therefore I'm going to have fresh air mixing with a larger volume of stale air. Therefore, the oxygen concentration in the lungs is going to be lower in the alveoli. So I'm going to, I'm going to squeeze this in here. So yeah, so fresh air. Squeeze over here, mixes with a large volume, with a larger volume of stale air, therefore lower O2 conch in alveoli. So I've lost my concentration difference. Yeah, so that's the, the one to kind of like really kind of think about. Because again, you know, you need to make things a levelly. So let's look. Let's look at a a level diagram of a section through part of an alveolus, just to get some more terminology correct. Um, these here are red blood cells. So these are red blood cells, red blood cells. They are both red blood cells. It's a section through, hence why they look differently. So this is why it's a it's a two D slice or a section. Um, and um, the RBCs are in different places, are in different places. Yeah, so they both look like the top one, apart from this one's only been sliced through part of its, part of its, its cell. Anyway, I was digressing from, uh, from lungs. Here, this is the air in alveolus. In this area here, which means that this cell here, and I'm just going to shade it in slightly. There's my highlighter, go for a little red. So this cell here, I've gone over its nucleus, all of this, all of that, all of that is part of one cell. That's its nucleus here. Okay, so this red one is part of the, the cell that forms the alveolus. So this is a alveolar epithelial cell. This is all right alveolar epithelial cell. So there's really two epithelial cells that you have to learn about at, at A level, the alveolar one, and then the one that lines the ileum of the small intestine that has the microvilli and all the disaccharidases and the core transport proteins. So you know quite a lot about that cell. But yeah, this is just a lining cell of that forms the wall of the alveolus and it's an epithelial cell. And as you can see, it's a really flattened cell. Again, people use the, the, the word thin, but they'll end up saying thin cell wall. So the alveolus forms a wall. So, sorry, these cells form a wall. 
However, it's an animal cell. It hasn't got a cell wall. I, I prefer the word flattened, um, and then we're less likely to mess it up. Um, this here in purple, that's one part of one cell. Then I'm now onto the next cell, and this is a cell that's well. It's surrounding my blood, and therefore this is our um, capillary, the epithelial cells that form the capillary. So I'm just going to pop it down here. So this is our um, yeah, so it's the epithelial cell of capillary. And this is where the, where the plasma would be. So oxygen only has to diffuse through this very small distance here. Yeah, it's that distance there. You know, from oxygen molecules go from there through this really thin part of the alveolar epithelia through a really thin or flattened cell that forms an epithelial cell of the capillary and then the red blood cells are um, you know practically the same size as the lumen of the capillary and therefore what have done, what have done there um, therefore then yeah it's going through two only goes through two cells so it's a short distance um, and um, yeah and and yeah, so two cells short distance and the cells are really thin or they are really flattened. OK, um, and carbon dioxide would likewise diffuse out really easily. It doesn't go from the, from the red blood cell, it goes from the plasma. So, yeah, CO2 is going to go that way because it's, in, it's, it's like dissolved in the blood plasma. It's carbon dioxide. OK, so, yeah, when we talk about just going back to our fixed law again about about our surface area, um, surface area is just yeah you know that there's many alveoli concentration difference that's all about breathing and talk, think about that residual volume um, thickness of membrane um, i prefer it to say you know like thickness of barrier um, a sheet of cells forms a membrane but also cells have a thin membrane so again this is a recipe here for messing up chucking in cell wall when you don't mean cell wall and saying that they have a thin cell membrane. All membranes are the same thickness. So this black line here that's drawing out that cell membrane is the same thickness as every single cell. Even if it was a big podgy cell, it would still have the same th thickness. It's still a phospholipid bilayer. They have a certain depth to them. I think it's seven nanometers is their, um, yeah, they're, they're always thin. A cell membrane is always, always thin. So, yeah, um, it's just the problem that, yeah, a sheet of cells forms a membrane. So, yeah, basically never say a membrane on its own. Always say what membrane are you talking about? You know, the cells form a thin membrane. Tick. Um, cells have a cell membrane. Brilliant. Um, you know, the nuclear membrane or the RER membrane um, or the Golgi membrane gets pulled into a vesicle and then the vesicle membrane fuses with the cell membrane etc anyway let's let let's just go through in, inhalation for the last bit what are we doing for time 13 minutes so i'm doing okay today um so yeah breathing in again this is lovely to learn because it's a series of steps however two of them happen at the same time so you know pick one and then um say the other so when we're breathing in, I need to increase the volume. So the rib cage rises up and it does that by the intercostal muscles contracting. But but there are two of them. So it's important, you know, which one and it's the external ones. So the external intercostals, intercostal muscles contract. Almost didn't write muscle then. Intercostal. Yeah, I better write muscle. Muscles contract. And then that pulls the, you know, this pulls the rib cage up and out. Also, I'm going to start, start it with also, the diaphragm, diaphragm contracts and, and flattens. So it's going from a dome shape to a less dome shape. 
So you kind of, you know, it is in, in effect moving downwards, but it doesn't kind of dip. You know, I don't get a U shape out of it. Yeah, so it flattens is, is a better description. So if my rib cage has moved up and out and my diaphragm has flattened, we've increased the volume. Yeah, so the, so the volume of the thoracic cavity increases. None of this is on GCC, by the way. So it's all getting more, even if, if, even if you think diaphragm contracts and flattens sounds an easy for A level, well, it's um, new knowledge, so you don't, um, yeah, so it, it will get marks. Now, when the thoracic cavity, um, the volume increases, the pressure in the lungs decreases. Then the final thing I say is that is that air moves in again, not oxygen moves in to and the posh word is equilibrate the pressure difference. Done. Uh, if it was how do we breathe out? Well, we change external to internal. We still say contract. So I could say that. On this point, you know, if I wanted an extra mark on there, um, these muscles are antagonistic. So I could also add for an extra mark that the internal ICs, intercostals, relax. But I've seen mark schemes where, they are, where you only need to mention one of them. Um, yeah, so if I, was, if I was saying the opposite, I'd say internal intercostals contract, external intercostals relax. This pulls the rib cage down and inwards. The diaphragm relaxes and becomes domed or moves upward or becomes, yeah, yeah, domed is, is probably the opposite, flattened. The volume of the thoracic cavity decreases, pressure in the lungs increases, air moves out to equilibrate the pressure difference. So hopefully that was useful. Again, really focus on the A level bits. If, you may, if I was making an A level paper, I wouldn't be, you know, testing, you know, basic stuff in terms of fixed law i'd be focusing on that concentration difference and the thickness of membrane as i.e i need to know these terms for thickness of membrane epi alveol epithelia knowing that the capillaries are likewise two cells but flattened um, and when we we do um, the insects and the fish gills next time it's it's the same thing. I say next time we're going to do um, fat digestion next time, but it'll be the one after that. Okay, hopefully that was useful.